sweet. It is windy like mad, and it's kind of cold. Um, you can see it right there. That's the little LED box. Um, the power is right there. The only thing is it's kind of close to the amp gauge. Until you close it, then it's nowhere near it. So i got to put some kind of insulator between there. And the fact that I'm missing the nut and it's metric and I can't find one. But it is wired to the fuse block behind it, above it. And uh, I'll show you. Close the deck. Oh! Okay. Now, this gauge doesn't have a light hole. Awesome. <laughs> Key is off. You turn the key on and it's going to do the cycle. Now I got one LED. I ordered more. I got to wait for them. When I turn the key on, that's what it does. It does the cycle of all the colors. And it blinks and goes out. Now by default, these things are off. So if it was during the day to do the colors, then it would go off. I reach under the dash right here, and that little button's right there. We have red, green, blue, mix, which is uh, green and red. I think this is blue and green. Purple, which is red and blue. Uh, there's a white kind of color. It's actually a blue and green, but it looks more white than anything. And then the rotating. I could be driving down the road and your lights will be doing this. Now, I told you I wanted the Chevrolet to light up. I'll show you that it is. I can turn the key off. This one only comes on with the key. There's an LED in there with three layers of uh, clear blue plastic. I'm going to put uh, aluminum foil tape around the bottom of the bracket I made for it and the top of the, uh, the bottom edge of the uh, speedometer so it's got a place to reflect around. But it really looks good. It'll look better at night. You can't see it right now. Maybe if I shut the door. It glows all the way across nice and even. There's a bracket I made under there. I can get you on camera. Right there. Holds the LED at the back and uh, it's, I think it's two inches. And I just put some flathead screws in here. I don't mind that look. But uh, I'm going to shut it off the key. And every time you turn it on, you get rainbow bright colors here. Um, I'm actually, I just soldered the high beam. LED switch, LED light, and uh, I'm going to be connecting that in a minute. We'll try that. Alright. Um, that should really be it for LEDs until I get some more and get some gauges to put them in. Um, I have these rubber plugs. Let me see if I can find one. Little rubber plugs. Now, with the rubber plugs, what I was thinking, if you take any gauge, like the fuel gauge, and if I slice this up the middle, put the LED in it, it can hold the LED, but this one's too small and it just fell in. Great. Oh, no. No. I'll get it out. No big deal. It's right there. But, um, cool. All right, I got to put the high beam LED in. And this little piddly electric stuff. I did talk to the guy with the exhaust. He's finally back to work. Dear God. Um. He's going to bring it in. I don't know if he finished it or not. He's kind of kind of weird. I don't know what was going on, but I think I might put this light in my fuel gauge. I'll find a bigger rubber. All right, I'm going to wipe this LED, and then I'll show you that. That's real easy. One goes to ground, one goes to the high beam side of the lights. My mirror moved. Willies. Uh, freaking cold up. He's lucky if I got this done. But, uh... Oh, what the hell did I do with that light? I think I left it in the house. The mess is contained. It's over here. Nothing's changed. But, uh, having fun. I took some Allen head stainless steel bolts and I ground the heads down to the flat spot and I had a guy at work TIG weld them to a piece of uh, quarter inch rod. I think it's an inch and a inch, inch and a quarter wide. These are T-bolts. Um, those stupid bolts I was using right there, this is going to replace them. 
it um, it sits the sheet metal actually bends over a bolt head you can see a little bit of it right there and these things are kind of rubbing on the thing so I needed something that fit in that body line see that groove around the outside so that's what's going to go in there next time I take the dash out that was one of the other things I did um, I have my metal firewall over here now this was something when I was there and the thing was laying on its back I laid a piece of sheet metal on it and I just traced the outline and I got it so close and I ground the edge with an oxide flapper nice and easy. I'm going to transfer that to a piece of cardboard right now. Um, I got some cardboard from work and uh, I'm going to make a pattern. A radio bracket. I wanted an updated stereo in it. I mean, just something with CD, AM, FM, whatever. Um, I made a little bracket. It fits right there. And as you can tell, it's on the back side of the uh, tube that runs across the dash. And the way it works out, it's going to sit almost on top of the heater at the back. I think it'll just make it there, but if it's going to sit on it, it's going to be about an inch. But that's it. you got to kind of look for it. You stand up here, you don't even see it. But that was a pretty cool addition. I cannot believe this weather. You hear the wind? Ridiculous. But, um... I'm going in. I'm going to work on the firewall. I got it right there. The cardboard is in the back of my Jeep. I'm going to take one piece, probably just bring that in the house because it's too windy out here to do anything. I can lay it in the street. It doesn't blow down the street. I'm going to transfer it to this and uh, work on a CAD pattern for it. I was measuring this um, from the frame while I'm here. Uh, from the frame to say the outer edge, almost the edge is two and a half on this side, the passenger side. Let's go try it on the driver's side. I think it was two and three. Eight. I'm tripping over everything today. My ruler only has two ends and neither one of them are upright. What I mean. Okay, one, two, and no, two and a half. Hmm. One, two. That's about two and three eighths. I yanked on it; it didn't come out. So two and three eighths on this side. That was to the seam, right? One, two, one, two, three. Yeah, it's kind of close. Two and three eighths, I'll call it on this side. So I'm going to make the patterns to go up and over. i got to locate my steering column. i got to locate my throttle. i got to locate my heater. The pedal, if we use it even, I don't know. But that's going to be a while. i got to go from here up. 
in the frame up, measure how high all the hoses come out. I want to make like an aluminum box and recess it in and put rivets around it. I want to put uh, an aluminum filler and put rivets around it, maybe make it fit inside this groove instead of just riding the surface of it. Which that's going to be a real trick because uh, how do you transfer to something that's already there? Maybe, uh, maybe shade the cardboard. I don't know, we'll see. Or maybe cut the cardboard out when I get most of the dimensions down. But I want to get cracking on the firewall. I know my frame is two inches wide, five inches high. I'm going to go probably half inch up off the frame like that. Maybe three quarters just to keep away from it. Um, as to using this pedal, we'll figure out a way to do something with it. Uh, I wanted to measure my hoods. Pin to pin on the hood and see what I could do with that. Maybe I'll just put a 3 8 rod. Actually, I think that's half inch. Why not check with the ruler? We're here. Good guess. 3 8 What's this one? This one is quarter inch. I'm going to stand. This is 31. This is 35. Uh, I'm going to measure that too. I had a tape measure. It is a tape measure. Ugh. I can go from here and I'll give it a little less. It's kind of hard to do it one hand, guys. 41. So I'm going to go 40 and 3 quarter. Yeah, that should be perfect. Um, I have holes right here on the end of this rail for my that win, for my support. These are half-inch, I believe. Yeah, those are half-inch holes. These are probably uh, three-eighths. One, two, one, two. Yeah, actually a little less than three-eighths. Or I have these holes. All depends really where you want to put it. But the 35 grill has a lot of holes around it and a lot of supports and stuff. There used to be rubber seals that went in here. Actually, they're not even rubber, they're rope. There's like a piece of rope tied down in, in these grooves. All long gone. The Chevy has a stainless steel band that goes around here. That's actually hanging up around my window. Goes the firewall. Uh, goes through a hole and there's a bolt right there that pulls it tight. Um, this was where the rope seal went. I think it's felt. Those are the holes that hold it in. Right there. Can you hear this wind? This is nuts. Alright, so I'm out here taking measurements. I'm going to go in the house. Um, this is one of Hank. Hank had a bunch of these. It's just foam. It's like 99 cents. We were screwing around and we put it up here. Must be Dawn did. It's kind of creepy, Dawn. Hmm. We should make an aluminum one, huh, Hank? That would be pretty cool. Make a nice base for it. Somebody try and rip it off, though, guaranteed. Uh, yeah, i got to think about a sway bar, too. I have these bushings, but where could they go up front? And if it involves taking the radiator off, dear God. I don't want to go backwards. I want to go forwards. All right, so I'm going in. I'm going to mess with the uh, firewall over there. Grab that piece of cardboard. After I uncharge my battery here, because I kicked it off. I'm good. Hey, boys and girls, have a good night. Do what I can in this freaking crazy weather. This does not feel like spring. It's like uh, fall. It's like October.